From rock-laden beaches to jams and jellies and lakeside views, the Keweenaw Peninsula has been an area ripe for exploration. We are coming to you with eight things to do that are sure to delight. Starting off with Hunter's Point Park. Small trails yeah. that go along the harbor and Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. It was cool too because when you're on or at Hunter's Park and you look back you're looking across the water at Copper Harbor. Yeah. So that was kind of neat. There's a North Beach Trail and there's a South Beach Trail. They're both very easy to walk. You can get to the very end of the point and then you have a pretty cool view of Porter's Island right there across the way. Lots of pine trees that are just like dipping into the water. Lots of areas to go off and explore. So mm -hmm. definitely an area that you should check out. While you're in Copper Harbor, you can check out Brockway Mountain Drive. This is a 9.7 mile scenic drive that goes up to the top of Brockway Mountain, which was named after one of the early settlers of Copper Harbor back in the early 1800s. It was a pretty cool drive. It's really, it's pretty. You can drive all the way up and it kind of dead ends in a little loop area. Yeah. And then from there you have great views of like Eagle Harbor and then Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. So you have to time it right because the weather can either be foggy or it can be completely clotted over. Right. We went a few times, not to Brockway Mountain, but into Copper Harbor. We lucked out once and we were able to get clear views and you can actually see 50 miles out to Isle Royal. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool drive. The road was built in 1933 by 300 men and they were paid 25 cents an hour. And when it first opened, it was actually only open on Sundays and holidays. Lots of the old infrastructure is still there. Lots of the old brick walls from the mid thirties are still there. So a really cool area to, to go check out when you're in Copper Harbor. Down from Copper Harbor is Astor Shipwreck Park. September 24th, 1844, the John Jacob Astor encounters strong winds. It drags the sinker across the ground and crashes into the rocks and explodes into flames. I'm not sure how the boat exploded into flames. It's because they had just got done unloading it. So I don't mm. know if it was full of like hidden explosives or something, but at any rate, it's down underneath 35 feet of water. So if you're the kind of person that scuba dives, you can go down there and check it out. There's supposed to be an underwater trail going all the way down there. So if again, if you scuba dive, you can go check it out. But for the rest of us, you can look for agate on the beach and enjoy the view of the Copper Harbor Lighthouse, which is right across the bay. Just outside of town a little bit is an area called the Devil's Wash Tub, which is technically a blowhole. I mean, there's not really much to see there. No, it was really underwhelming. Um, yeah, there's it was. no signage. There's just a small pull off yeah. on the road across from someone's house. Mm -hmm. You follow the trail down and then there's just kind of a hole yeah. full of water. Uh, kind of sketchy, but when you told me that it was the northernmost part of Michigan, that made it kind of cool. Yeah, so that makes it actually more worth going to. Yeah. So if you're going to head down there, just be careful because it's like kind of sketchy going down. Yeah. Like I went down by myself <laughs> and they all stay at the top yeah. just because there's like water on both sides. So unless you like to swim and climb at the same time, <laughs> wouldn't recommend doing no. that. But we saw it on Google Maps, so we went down there. So still kind of cool to check out. It was. So there's tons of waterfalls in the area. Montreal Falls. But it was quite a hike to get out there four to five miles, mm -hmm. I think, because that, was that the one where it was closed? It's actually private property. Yeah. But they allow parking there so that people can get out to the waterfalls because they want everyone to be able to enjoy it. Right. And there's two gates on the property and the first gate was closed, which actually added a mile yeah, or more at least. to the hike. Yeah, but you turn up Smith Fisheries Road and then you stay to the right and you just ignore the sign that says private property. Yeah. Um, I can assure you, you, you are allowed to go up there. Right. We checked we checked with people who live here. Right. And they told us the whole story. Right. So the, the property owners like put parking lot in, or not a parking lot, but a, an area to park. Right. So you are allowed to go back there. It's a longer hike to get up there, but I think it's really worth it because it dumps like right out into the lake. Yeah. So it was so really was cool, cool to see. To see it go out into Lake Superior. Uh, the water, the water, the road is awful. Yeah, the road is awful. Getting out there. Uh, so be aware of that if you're not in the right kind of vehicle. Yeah. Maybe that's not the hike yeah. for you. Yeah, definitely not. But you can go all the way out to the waterfalls and then you can hike another, they said it was a third of a mile, but it felt longer than mm -hmm. that. Oh uh, yeah. Up to, it's a two part system. So it's lower falls and it's upper falls. Um, both of them are worth seeing, I think. And if you're just there for the grand view, then just hiking to the lower falls and that's good enough. Yeah. And then that's where you can see it run out into the lake. Yep. Definitely worth checking out. 
on that same road right before you reach the falls halfway down you're going to reach a trailhead for bear bluffs this is a 2.9 mile loop you'll want to stay to the left mm -hmm. unless you like climbing then you can start on the right. But if you start on the right, you're gonna ascend, you know, a few hundred feet up this bluff. Up the bluffs, yeah. So if you're just in a few of the views, like we were, um, it was relatively easy-ish hike on the way out there. It, it wasn't bad, you know, there was some uphill, but yeah. it, it was not awful. Right. It was worth hiking to because if you look down below the cliffs, mm -hmm. so you have Smith Fisheries, which is that same place that you pass when you go to hike mm -hmm. Montreal Falls. Really cool hike. Yeah. Definitely worth it. Definitely check it out. Jam pot. That place was cool. Yeah. These are monks from a monastery that mm -hmm. sell jams. They pick berries and they pray to God and they make jam. That's That's it. That's their world. That's it for like the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And they started small and then they have grown to like 740 acres in size. Not the jam place, but just their monastery. Mm -hmm. And they're still selling jam out of like this little building. Yeah. So it's very cool. They have all kinds of like baked desserts. So good. And uh, what was it there? Cream cheese. It's a cream cheese muffin. Oh my gosh. It's the best thing ever. Expect a line. Every time we went there, there was a line. We got lucky mm -hmm. and we were able to get in. But when we came out, there's at least 15, 20 people on yeah, that line. Yeah, there was a line all the way off the porch. Yeah, there sure it, was. But for good reason. Yeah, it is absolutely worth. I'm gonna say to stay in that line for at least a little bit. For a little bit. A little bit. But yeah, in the, you know, the story of the place. Yeah. Uh, and then it's Father Basil. He was one of the original, he's a, a founder yep. of that monastery. It's probably gonna be the guy that's gonna be checking you out too. Mm -hmm. He's got the glasses and the beard. White beard. And he'll tell you exactly what every little thing is. Mm -hmm. And then he'll do it for the next person. Chocolate chocolate cake, coffee, cream, cheese frosting. Mm -hmm. The loaf is a solid of Simmons breakfast bread. The large slice, German's chocolate cake with caramel filling. The striped one, peanut butter. And then he'll do it for the next person. He wouldn't even get irritated. He's in no hurry. He oh has my gosh. the most, he has the warmest smile I've ever, like it was yeah. bizarre. He smiled and I swear I felt my heart get warm. It's a calming personality. Oh my goodness. You have to go get something from this place. Yeah. I guarantee you they'll have something that you'll like. Mm -hmm. So down the road further is the jam lady. Jam lady. The jam lady. Upon first impressions of the place, it might not be the kind of place that you would want to go into. It's not exactly a warm and inviting... Or you don't think you can. It doesn't look like anything. Right. It's it's somebody's house. It is somebody's house. And in fact, they've like sectioned part of it off mm -hmm. and there's a door you walk through and you're like walking back in time. Yeah. It there's reminds like an old like, of... rotary phone. Yeah. It reminds me of my Nana's house. <sighs> all the old pictures yeah the black and white pictures there's nobody there nope there is a honesty jar mm -hmm. and that's what you put your money in to pay for yep but she sells all these jams and jellies and syrups and the stuff called chow chow favorite new condiment yes. we've never heard of chow chow until here turns out it's like a southern type of condiment that's what they say but i've never seen it 
Born and raised in the South also, I've never even seen that. But oh my gosh, whatever is in this concoction of stuff, you can buy online. Yeah, we just found that out and that's not great that we know that now. Yeah, and apparently they've been in business for like over 200 years. They started as a small like table somewhere and then they've been at their present location since the 50s. So it's a fifth generation run. Yep. Uh, Operation. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we'll put the website in. You can check it out yourself. And when you're there in Eagle River, you'll have to go there and visit yourself because it's quite the experience. It is. Well, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan did not disappoint. No. We would definitely come back. Like, I'm kind of shivering because it's like relatively chilly. It's been in the 50s today. It has. And, and it's, it's July. Which is amazing. Yeah. So the area has so much potential for exploration there's so many trails there's like loads of snowmobile trails we're gonna come back one day a snowmobile somewhere around here but more importantly we're gonna come back and get some of those muffins from the jam pot yes well that's our eight things to do on the quinoa peninsula so thanks for watching Wait, you said quinoa quinoa <laughs> i said earlier i keep thinking of that as like quinoa quinoa because I keep spelling it wrong or saying it wrong too. Keen Kiwanaw. Kiwanaw. Well, that's our eight things to do on the Kiwanaw Peninsula. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining in. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like this. And we'll see you on the next one.